I'm going to talk about using Flow to add types to JavaScript. Uh, depending on how you feel about types, this is either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. Uh, I am in the best thing ever camp. I am a card-carrying member of the Church of Types. I firmly believe that when you write code that has a square peg and a round hole and the compiler can see that these things ain't going to fit, it should just tell you that. And Flow brings us quite a lot of that magic to our JavaScript code. Uh, I work for a company that has a fairly substantial Angular code base. It's not huge, but it's, it's enough to be painful. And we were pretty eager to jump in with Flow, partly to, to, to resolve some of that pain or lessen some of that pain if we could. So I don't know if you've heard about Flow. It was released by Facebook because they have a massive JavaScript code base and were, were feeling the pain. Uh, they announced it uh, about a year ago and said, we're going to release it. Release it. They released it five or six months ago, ballpark. They're moving really fast, uh, releasing once every couple of weeks. The last, two the last two releases, the last three releases, have all had features that we really wanted, and they're, they're dropping in pretty fast. So we have a few CoffeeScript files, and the way we use templates mean we need to ignore some requires. And it's now possible to do that. You can just say, that's not actually JavaScript. Just ignore that, and it will happily do that. So Flow is quite different to TypeScript, in that TypeScript assumes you're going to convert pretty much everything over to TypeScript. You're going to jump completely. Flow is much more conservative. It just says, I'm going to run this server, and it's going to watch your source code. And if you put a comment at the top, an at Flow in that comment, and then put some type signatures in your source code. I'll just check that that's all good. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I really like about it. Uh, it. You have to explicitly say if you want a type to be able to contain null, which helps to avoid the billion dollar mistake that we were hearing about before. Um, uh, and it's, it's, it's pretty expressive. It's more... It's somewhere between Java expressive and ML expressive. It has some really nice features in terms of coping with idiomatic Java, JavaScript code. So as of 0 0.13, you can do kind of uh, abstract data, algebraic data type sort of maneuvers by having types that are literal strings. So if you have a string foo, that's a type in itself and the only valid value of type foo is the string foo. And that lets you build uh, and that lets you build other kind of useful things because you can say I want a thing that has either type foo and this field and that field or type bar and the other field and something else. So it's it's pretty rich. Uh, it's really fast because the server's running all the time and it keeps the types in memory. It just has to look at what's changed, works that in the model tells you what the problems are. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, when you're changing type declarations for other libraries, it's not so beautiful because the server has to restart and takes 30 seconds or so on my MacBook Air. Uh, so I like that it's a pretty rich type system. Uh, it's got generics with subtype constraints. They're really careful about keeping things sound in the type system, which I love. Uh, and you can gradually convert a file to type. So you can say, I'm just going to add these bits, and these bits that I'm adding, I'm going to add some type signatures. Babel strips them out. It all works pretty well. Uh, I dislike that the ES6 support is incomplete in some weird ways. So no let or const. Uh, surely you can just use the same rules as var. I don't, I don't get that one. Uh, but it does support fat arrows and promises, and as of 0 0.12, it supports await async. Um, and the other thing that I really dislike is that it's easy to get the any type running around by mistake. If you have an object of type any and you call a method on it, then you have another object of type any, and it can kind of work its way around. If you have an array and you don't explicitly say what's in the array, then you have an array of any and that can give you surprising errors. So one of the things on my kind of to-do list is work out how to be more conservative about any. But on the whole, uh, we're definitely liking it and are definitely going to keep using it. And if you have any questions, feel free to grab me. Or if it's a 10-second question,
light blue. 